KM, Casper Collins, dressed resplendently in a new uniform, a bowed pistol tucked into each boot, a cigar clenched between his teeth, and riding a borrowed gray mount. He didn't even have his own horse with him. He, he's, he's riding, he had rid to the Platte River Bridge Station in, in the ambulance, of all things, with a group of messengers. Instead, he had borrowed that, that's, that's what was described as a spirited gray mount of the 11th Kansas band leader. He formed a small command of 25 Kansas cavalrymen and rode out across the thousand foot Platte River Bridge in a jaunty and debonair manner, first passing to pass his capi to a friend, take this to remember me by, I will not return. That moment, Casper Collins riding from the Platte River Bridge, I said early in this presentation, I'm not a writer. I wish I was. I wish I could describe that moment. Or I wish I was an artist that I could paint with a broad stroke of a brush, Casper Collins in his dress uniform, borrowed gray mount, leading a small detachment of 25 men, and what his gravestone refers to as a forlorn hope, riding the relief of Amos Custard and his wagon train. So again, acknowledging my weaknesses, my shortcomings, I share to you the words of historian Alfred Mochler, an early Wyoming historian. He bade his two friends in the fort a last farewell. He seemed to have a premonition that he was about to ride into the valley of death, but he did not falter. He was deeply impressed with the thought that after he crossed the Platte River Bridge, the next bridge he would cross would lead him into that undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, but he went bravely forward. Again, that is Wyoming historian Alfred Mochler. Did he? I don't know. I mean, did he know he's riding to his death? He gave up his cap. To, to a friend, I mean, you know, it seems evidence of it. But this is what I think about Casper Collins. He, he, he was a son of a lawyer, a state senator. His education would have been steeped in the classics, the heroes of Rome and Greece. I fear he probably spoke Latin as well as Lakota and, and other sundry Indian languages. And I think Casper Collins was profoundly aware of the role he had to play that day. We couldn't ask him. So crossing Platte River Bridge, forming of columns of four, Casper rode across the bottomland and turned west. Within a mile, they were sprung upon by an overwhelming number of Sioux and Cheyenne warriors. As one Kansas cavalryman remarked from every point on the compass, Estimates of the number of warriors anywhere between 1,000 and 3,000. Casper Collins' command were 25. Casper Collins sees in the situation, ordered his small command into line, and charged back towards the Platte River Bridge Station where Captain Brettany with 10 of his own men, armed with Spencer's seven-shot carbines, maintained a bridgehead, for lack of a better term. Indian warriors intermingled with the fleeing troopers. The Lakota warriors would later claim or blame the Sioux, or excuse me, the Lakota would later blame the Cheyenne for their own shots taking down Lakota. Uh, Major Anderson was unable to use the howitzer of the post because everything was mixed in. But just when it seemed that Casper Collins, who now covered the retreat, he led from the rear, or led from the front, or in a retreat back to the bridge, and suddenly he's in the rear, covering the retreat of his men. Just when it seemed like they were going to regain the refuge, the sanctuary, the bridge station, Casper Collins 
heard the plaintive pleas of a Kansas cavalryman. Again, he didn't know these men. He had never soldiered with them before. Who had been wounded, had fallen from his horse. And Casper Collins turned his own horse around, rode back to the Kansas cavalryman, leaned from his saddle, extended his hands, pointed the Kansas cavalryman into his saddle with them. Casper Collins at this point had been wounded himself, a gunshot wound to the thigh. It then Casper Collins lost control of his mount. It wasn't his horse. He had borrowed it. And he was overwhelmed by pursuing Sioux and Cheyenne warriors. Last sight of Casper Collins, an arrow on the forehead, bowed revolvers in each hand, reins of his horse in his mouth, barking a challenge of the Sioux and Cheyenne warriors as he rode to his death. Again, remember the quote I started this presentation with. Casper Collins and four of those 25 that rode with him fell in the retreat. Nine were seriously wounded. Every other man was wounded in some degree or another. But those remaining men did regain the Platte River Bridge Station and did regain the, the, the